What's up? Patrick LaRouge here from Evolve Restorative Therapy. You can find me at livepainfreeprocess.com. I'm an intuitive healer and have a pain-free concierge practice. Um, it's all based off my Live Pain Free process, and it works wonders on optimizing athletic performance, but I made it for uh, people to live and move pain-free, mainly because it gives you a step-by-step -step process on how to eliminate, eliminate your pain physically. It gives you a walkthrough on what you need to do to balance your mental aspect, as well as balancing your emotional as aspect. And combining all three of those make you that much better of a human, hence optimizing athletic performance. We are in month three, March, knee pain. And what we're going to be doing is giving you a pain-free mindset about knee pain. That's what we're going to be working on today. The uh, pain-free mindset on knee pain is all about understanding that you have to sit in the soup, right? Uh, a strong pain-free mindset is everything that you need to go through things, which means you have to sit there and say, all right, what's really going on? What's going on emotionally? What's going on physically? What's going on mentally? All three of those play a role in your body communicating in, uh, in this way of saying you have pain. So pain-free mindset for knee pain is all about sitting in the soup. So this is going to be a little tricky because the knee pain has some emotional aspects to it, but I see more of an issue with people when they they flip flop of should I do surgery or is it a structural issue or is it a muscular issue? So let's give the the middle of of the gambit is you have a floating body inside your knee. Your knee pretty much runs like this, right? And it runs, runs, and it goes through, and it crunches as you start to flex and extend. It goes number like this. What a floating body is the cushion pats, which is your meniscus, starts to shred away because you're already too muscularly tight and you're grinding away at things. So your meniscus starts to shred and then shred away. And if uh, by chance one of those shreds float away and they pop off the actual cushion aspect of the meniscus. So what happens is as you're walking and walking and walking, a nice little piece gets stuck in between there and clamps down and what happens is your body clamps oh my god something's wrong something's there and it doesn't want to move anymore so you need buckles you need stops you need clamps and it just doesn't want to move until it actually gaps somewhat and allows that to move uh, move again and the floating body moves away and then you're able to go so those are when you're walking like, ah, like oh damn my knee hurts you know and you crutch your knee and you stop moving and then all of a sudden you're moving again and it's, oh that was a free thing that's a floating body now that's a structural issue as well as a muscular issue. That's why I'm using this one as uh, an example because a lot of uh, people go through this and they're like, oh man, I have a meniscus tear. Should I go um, get it fixed? Should I not? What I want you to understand within the pain-free mindset for knee pain is sit there and understand, yes, you have a structural issue, but when you have uh, pain, you actually have a muscular issue. So if you clean up that muscular issue, you start to gap the joint a little bit more, and then you're able to uh, move better. So if that floating body does come in contact, it's not going to be anywhere near as bad as if you're grinding already, and it's moving through and it grinds on it. So the name of the game is understand, all right, if I can't get it fixed, you know, run with it. You know, because that is a structural issue. You're going to need to get that fixed. If it's something that's minor and you want to stop it and you want to stop it from happening and so you don't need surgery and you're catching it relatively early, you have to understand every single time that happens, your body will clam shut. You have to do all the work, like rehab-wise, that a person would do after knee pain for this. That's how big I want you to uh, make this because eventually you're going to, um, if you don't take it that seriously, you're going to need surgery, then you're going to need to do it anyway. So if you do it now and you start focusing on it now, um, your body will start to gap more. It's the same thing when I work with arthritis cases. Arthritis cases is bone on bone, right? But they don't have synovial fluid to move anything. But when the bone stops rubbing itself and it calms down in flame-wise, it no longer talks. It just doesn't have that synovial fluid to stop the uh, grinding. So if you get the muscle tissues to actually gap the surface, you no longer have severe arthritis pain. It actually feels fine, but you don't have that slow motion quick. It's just going to go back. Same thing here. If you work with the knee, if you work with the hamstring, if you work with the calf, if you work with the hip, if you work with all these structures, that's going to naturally get your knee to make it a hinge joint again. So it makes it a stable object. So if you remember in the first one, stability versus mobility, the ankle needs to be a movable object first then your knee becomes a stable object. If your knee is trying to be immovable, it's doing all sorts of grinding and moving around, that's your humongous problem. You have to rearrange that. So look for help for that. 
then you have to start getting the quad to be a quad and start not grabbing the knee and pulling the knee up on itself, grinding itself. Then you have to get the calf to work. Then you, when these are all the, all the things that we're going to be working with in the rest of the weeks. But that's what I want you to focus with the knee, uh, pain-free mindset with the knee pain. Sit with it. Decide, do I want to get uh, surgery or do I not? And if I don't want to get surgery, I know every single time that happens, I have to go through some major stuff to get everything to start working functionally right. And take it seriously so it doesn't progress any further and make it into a routine so you don't have to worry about when it happens because when it happens, you're already too late. Do it on a consistent basis so it's part of your normal routine and it's no longer a chore. So until next time, folks, if you haven't looked at the pain-free uh, pain zone, please look at that. There's a lot of videos that eliminate a lot of your pain, as well as the free PDF on 40 ways to eliminate pain. Look at that as well. But until next time, see you later. Bye.